Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin with a disturbing story out of Quebec. At least 31 residents from a private care home in Montreal have died in the last month. Five were confirmed with COVID-19. Today, Premier Francois Legault ordered a criminal investigation. The owner of this residence refused to give us access to the file of the patients, and it's only last night at 8, 8 p.m. that we learned that the number of deaths since March 13 was 31. The Premier says he believes it's a case of gross negligence. As Dan Spector reports, residents appear to have endured unthinkable conditions in the home. A body is removed from Heron residence in Dorval, Quebec on Saturday, one of more than two dozen people to die inside the private senior's residence since March 13th. No sympathy. Our sympathies. Through tears, the head of the West Island Health Authority gives her condolences to the families who had entrusted the residents to take care of their loved ones as she tried to explain how things went so wrong. They were struggling to keep their ratios of of staff to residents. McVeigh said on March 29th it became clear the situation at Heron was critical. Peter Whelan's mother was among those living in dire conditions. He says one day staff told her they didn't have enough time to change her diaper and clean up her burst urine bag. The, the urine stayed on the floor for another 12 hours at least. Health officials claim their offers to help the residents were met with little collaboration. We had two formal notices, two formal legal notices asking for them to give us information about the residents. The Sioux sent people to help on March 29th, including retired nurse Loredana Mole. So we went from room to room and every room then, the stench of urine and feces could have killed a horse. After health officials stepped in, Gail Steinberg says she could not reach her 102-year-old father. I, I can't help but wonder if if the staff has just deserted the place. Her father had been tested for COVID-19. He died on April 6th before the results came back. More important to me today is I would like to know if he was one of those patients who was neglected. The most recent promise they made to us, they broke within an hour. Police officers were outside the residence all day. It's now being investigated for criminal negligence. It's total negligence. Health officials claim things are better now. Authorities promise to call each and every family of deceased residents to give them an explanation. Dan Spector, Global News, Dorval, Quebec. BC, Alberta and Ontario are also dealing with COVID-19 outbreaks in long-term care homes. Today, the federal government announced it's bringing in new measures to protect care home residents and workers. Morgan Campbell has the latest on those efforts. With more than 100 nursing homes in Ontario reporting cases of COVID-19, government officials are looking to ensure frontline workers have the equipment they need to protect themselves. These are incredibly uh, horrific uh, reports that we've all been seeing. Access to equipment and retraining has been an area of contention. Global News began questioning officials about training after observing healthcare employees wearing PPE outside this Bob Cajun nursing home. Pinecrest Nursing Home is ground zero for a major outbreak that is spread among staff and residents, leaving at least 30 seniors dead. Through its Facebook page, the president of the Ontario Personal Support Workers Association said that her members had training, but went on to raise concerns that the speed at which the virus has hit made it difficult to bring staff up to speed. I don't know of any entity that can have training out that fast when you're dealing with mass hysteria and war zones on the front line. The Ontario Chief Medical Officer has stated it's up to each facility to offer proper training. The administrator at Pinecrest Nursing Home says all staff receive this training on how to use the equipment. Our home has been fully stocked with PPE from day one. But Mary Carr did not answer questions from Global News as to why staff or volunteers appeared to wear the equipment outside. Tim Delstra is with UFCW, a union that represents more than two 
5,000 long-term care home employees in Ontario. He says PSWs deserve higher pay, full-time jobs and more supports on the front lines. These are things that we strongly believe that the provincial government could implement quickly and that would be a real benefit. The province's Minister of Health won't commit to higher wages but are looking into creating full-time jobs. That's going to be another key method of keeping COVID-19 out of long-term care homes. But advocates want more done, and they want it done now. They're sitting in their cars before they go into long-term care. They're crying. They're scared to bring it back to their loved ones at home. Morgan Campbell, Global News. As we keep you informed on COVID-19, Donna Friesen will be hosting a special program on Sunday evenings. It's called Coronavirus, The New Reality, and it starts tomorrow at 7 p.m.